Vesta Sweet Transvestite. We continue our celebration of LGBTQ icons and classic horror in what is certainly the mecca of midnight movies, the immortal and immoral Rocky Horror Picture Show. And all I've got to say is, this movie sucks. But this show is incredible. Let me explain. Created by Richard O'Brien as a stage musical called The Rocky Horror Show, the twisted tale of sweet transvestites from transsexual Transylvania was later made into a film where it bombed hard upon its release but was granted everlasting life on the midnight circuit. A cult of rabid followers have kept this film alive for close to 50 years now and it's become a beacon of outsider culture, in particular the queer circle. It continues to be played at midnight screenings, usually accompanied by live performances given by actors and an audience all too eager to join in the mayhem. So, why did I say this movie sucks? Well, because it just kinda does. The weird thing about this movie is just how quickly it peters out. It's all fun and games for the first half, absolutely, but right about the time when the Transylvanians party ends and Eddie is killed off, the pace really begins to drag. I'm not saying there's nothing good afterwards, but the latter half of the movie really doesn't match the first half for sheer fun. It's like a lot of parties you go to that are great at first, but then everyone starts to leave and you're just kind of stuck there with a few stragglers and an empty cooler. It's not terrible really, but you get the feeling you should have left a half an hour ago. The movie is just like that. Okay, okay. There are good things too. The songs are catchy, there's some good jokes along the way, and even if the acting is a lot of hit and miss, there is one performance that definitely is fantastic, given by the man who can never escape the shadow of Rocky Horror, Tim Curry. Whether or not these things are enough to save the film all depends on the viewer, since this is a film that people either really love or really hate, for different reasons. So what is so great about Rocky Horror that has kept fans praising it for decades? Honestly, the best part of it to me are the fans themselves. I mentioned earlier that midnight screenings of this film continue, and it's in this setting that the Rocky Horror experience really becomes something great. Forget that house party metaphor I made. This is like Halloween and Mardi Gras had a freaky, glittery baby, and the excited weirdos in the audience more than make up for the dwindling pace of the movie. Of course, it isn't just the audience. The interactive games with the live actors recreating the show are where the most fun is had. People who have never been to these screenings are called virgins, and are initiated in a number of ridiculous ways. Bad burlesque dancing, putting condoms on bananas with their mouths, and some other things I probably shouldn't mention. Yes, I've been to them. Do these people defend the movie as any good? Yes and no. I think a lot of even the most diehard fans know that the movie is pretty crappy, and thus the tradition of heckling the movie comes in. A lot of the audience riffs are memorized by heart and have become just as famous as the songs themselves. I think in the end everyone knows what they're going to get out of the experience. Unconventional conventionists having lots of laughs and being part of this bizarre but beloved group. The spirit of Rocky Horror shines through to people, either because of or in spite of it being a stupid movie, and anyone who's seen it can still appreciate why it's been so beloved by the LGBTQ community. As gender roles continue to be explored and grow in our society, Rocky Horror can be appreciated as something of a pioneer, and the phrase, don't dream it, be it, has been inspiring people to be whatever they've wanted to be for decades so far, and hopefully decades to come.